All right, we'd set up our cartoon jumble with different amounts of line art layered up on top of each other. And in the last video, we were starting to delete from it. And I'm going to get more aggressive with that now. Now that we have all those layers in here, you'll see that some of them still have that little black box in the layer thumbnail. This is what's called the layer window. That is what makes them a smart object, which means when I try to delete from them, so for instance, I know I don't want this line border around it. I want it to be more like an asteroid in the middle. So I can lasso around it, and then when I hit delete, it's going to give me an error message because it's not directly editable as long as it's a smart object. So just a reminder, how do we make something that we've brought into Photoshop not a smart object anymore? We click on where it's highlighted as a layer, and we right-click on that. And then we scroll down to where it says rasterize layer. What that does is it makes those pixels pixels within Photoshop. And we know that because now the layer thumbnail image doesn't have that little black square in the corner. And then I can delete. And then I can do anything I want to this image. I can add color. I can do image adjustments. I can do lots of things. How do you revert it back? So if you ever want to go back to where it's a smart object, once you've changed it, I cannot now make this into a smart object because that would be like saying, the file that this is was referencing at the beginning, I'm now outputting that file retroactively. So that doesn't work. But you can always go back in Photoshop. If you go under Window, it's called History. And so if I wanted to get that smart object back without bringing it in again, I'd have to go back to before I rasterized. Does that make sense? And so what is an analog for this? Let's see. So smart objects, that's like if you're, if anyone's familiar with Canva, which is a really common kind of layout tool. It works like PowerPoint or like Google Slides. You can bring images into it, and once they're in the thing, you can stretch them, you can rotate them. You can even do slight color corrections to them. But what you can't do is like delete something from it. So if I take a McDonald's logo and I bring it into a Canva, and that McDonald's logo has a little trademark thing. And I want to change that into a W, you know, flip it upside down. I can flip it upside down, but then I need to erase the trademark thing. It won't let me erase the trademark thing because it's a, an object it's taking from outside and just arranging within the program. This is what's called a raster imaging program, not a layout program. So this program allows you to actually change every pixel. But to do that, it has to rasterize it. It has to like own that image, convert it into its own pixels, so that then you can erase the trademark image and then threaten a lawsuit from, or tempt a lawsuit from McDonald's. Yeah, so once you rasterize, the pixels are yours. But that's why I keep a folder, you know, in the class folder. I keep a folder always of my references. And I'll usually label it with a tag of red because these are not usually useful images. But if I ever want the smart object again, I can go back to the original file, bring it in. Like if you delete too much. All right. And once you, uh, once you once have you rasterized. Yeah, once you rasterize it, can you still click on it and move it around? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, rasterizing around? gives you way more options okay. than if it's a smart object. So, yeah, when you bring it in, you get what's called that transform box, and that lets you stretch it, right? That's just a layout feature, because it knows you probably want to do that when you bring it in. When you want to do that again, after you've already hit return once, you just hit command T, and that will give you that transform box again. That's a shortcut. It's a shortcut we'll be using a lot with compositing. Until you get used to the shortcuts, you can always just go up to the top options and click on Edit. And then Command T is what's called Free Transform. And Transform is the same thing, except you have to choose. This is what happens when you right-click within the Free Transform box. But Free Transform is kind of the, the best to start with because it lets you scale and rotate all at once. So if I want to scale it, I can. If I want to rotate the layer, I can. 
whether it's rasterized or not. This is actually a good thing to point out. So I rasterized it and then I erased the lines. But notice that this image is bigger than the white space, my canvas that I'm working on. So if I rotate it, some of those lines might appear again because those were ones that weren't on the canvas when I deleted. So these are just pixels. And even things that are off of your canvas are still memorized by the program, are still there for you to use. So you can move them onto the canvas or off of the canvas as you wish. Okay, time to get very direct about this. Uh, the easiest way, and probably the way I'll demo it just so you can see it, is to clean each layer as you go. So I have this layer. Let's clean it up. One way to clean it up is you want it to be purely black and white. So you see how there's gray there? Gray doesn't work great. It's going to print as like a slightly off-white. So to convert your image to, to clean black and white, you're on that layer. You have rasterized it. Now we're going to learn something new. We click on image at the top. And this is just from photo editing. And we go to adjustments. We are go always going to use three image adjustments in this class. We're getting introduced to our first one now. It is levels. Levels adjusts our, our lights and darks and midtones. You've probably heard of brightness contrast. This is a better version of brightness contrast. Uh, Command Shift 4. We'll do a targeted screen grab on a Mac. So these levels, you get a histogram. I know we looked at this last time. But we don't want a balanced histogram for this. We want extreme peaks at the shadows and at the highlights, right? Because we want black and white work. So if you have something like this where it's gray, you want to take your highlight slider, which is what these little triangles are called, and you want to move it to the edge of the pixels. So that will make whatever that bright, bright gray was, that will make that the brightest white. And then the black, you can see that there's almost content that's solid black, but if I want to make sure, I can just move that black slider in a little bit, and that will make sure that that's a nice black and white. Now, there is some stuff in between. So these are solid black pixels now. These are solid white pixels. You'll see that there are some grayish pixels. That's this content here. And I can just push beyond that if I want to until that's all black. But you'll see it kind of thickens the line work a little bit. And so then I can also push the white and thin it out a little bit. This is why we start with just black and white line art. So now I have a nice, clean black and white. Some of the, lin the lines are really thin. I could even get those to be solid black by pushing this enough. But you want to stop short of when you start to get digital noise, which is when you're going to get really saturated colored pixels. And your curves will become all these little stair steps. So this is what's called anti-aliasing. When we scan in a line or when we draw a line with a brush rather than a pencil tool, it's always going to give us a slight buffer of lighter pixels because that softens it for our eye. And that's not a bad thing. But I'm actually going to end up probably getting rid of this stuff with my lasso anyway. So then you hit OK, just like you would with a transform box. That's called a levels adjustment. The other thing I can do is just delete these lines. And remember, at the end of the last video, I showed you something called internal compositing, because I really liked this lasso shape. But unfortunately, it cropped off you know, within the, the smart object, within the source I found. And I can't just draw my own lasso, because I'm not allowed to use my own pixels. So what I did is I took another part of the lasso, actually two different parts of the lasso, from over here, I made them into their own layer with Command J, which is duplicate. You don't need to do all this. But basically, I'm making it my own by compositing within the image. So an internal composite is when you take something from the image, make a new element from it, and then composite it back into the image. It's like if I wanted to give myself a third eye. I could take a photograph of myself, take one of my eyes, make a duplicate of it, put it on my forehead. That's internal compositing. Now you'll notice the adjustment it still has grays here. These are two different layers. So how can I get rid of that? Well, first, 
I can merge these layers together. The, the two different lasso layers. It's layer one and two. And to do that, I hold down shift. You might not have to do this, right? But that selects both of them. And then I can go up to layer options and I'm going to merge those layers. The shortcut for that is command E. Okay, so that makes the one layer that then, now that it's one layer, I can do image adjustments and clean it up with levels so that it's clean black and white again. And then I'm going to merge it with the original. And I'm not going to be a perfectionist here. Oh, accidentally erased that. There we go. So I'm not going to be a, a perfectionist and clean up with my lasso, like that little stair step in pixels, that little jog. Before I print this as like an art piece, I would definitely do that stuff. But right now, I'm just going to merge those together. And then I'm going to erase the other things I don't want from this layer with my lasso. And I, I like to get rid of identifying features like faces. Whoops. I'm going to close my history there. If you ever need your history, it's, it's at the top of this tool. Um, these aren't tools. These are kind of window attributes. But your history is there if you ever need it. And Command Z will just take you through that. Did I accidentally click on it? Strange. I merged all this stuff. <laughs> I think I accidentally clicked on it, so I undid a lot of that work. So let me do it again. I'm just going to merge them all together and then do the adjustments. So Command E, make sure nothing is selected. So Command D to deselect, then image adjustments, levels, use the sliders to make it solid black and white. Now with my lasso, keep erasing. Because I just want it to be interesting line art. I'm not a huge fan of guns, so I might even erase that. Some of the interesting lines. Because we're just getting started. We want to layer up five things. And definitely anything you, you just don't want, like these edges. And you can do this with your mouse. I'm doing it with a trackpad. Or the case is open so that you can do it with tablets at the back. Always good to get practice with those tablets. I'm using Command Plus to zoom in. And once I'm zoomed in, I can hold down my space bar. And then I can move around the image to clean things up if I need to. Right now I'm just still using the lasso. Said I wouldn't be a perfectionist. I don't want to be a perfectionist. I don't want you to be. But some things I can't help but just fix. Okay. Command zero will fit it all back in. I don't really want this strong diagonal at all that's at the bottom. So I'm going to cut all of that out. And then maybe cut this out as well. So I've got one clean and placed layer now. Let's go to the next one. This has got a lot to it. It's on multiply mode so that I can see both layers like it's a projection. So I right click it, I rasterize it, and then I can go to image adjustments, levels, to make sure it's clean black and white by pushing past all of this stuff and then hit OK. I don't even need to zoom in to know what it's doing once you get used to the histogram. So that's what I want, kind of clean black and white line art. Once you rasterize it, how do, how do you bring up, there's your lasso already, it just shows up? Uh, I've just stayed on the lasso tool. Okay. Yeah. So these are your tools. And the transform box, you know, the placing, the command T, you, that's not linked to any one tool. So you can do that from any tool. Now, this one, if I turn the eyeball off on my layer underneath, right, then I can see this one clearly. It has a watermark. 
And instead of making that watermark, 